On side one of this disc, we covered various diagnosis conditions affecting engine performance. In this part of the program, we'll continue with additional diagnosis conditions. The format for this part of the program is the same as was presented on side one. As soon as I finish talking, the program will return to the index rather than continue playing. The index will remain displayed until you select one of the segments. After the segment you've selected is completed, the program will again return to the index, allowing you to choose another segment to watch. When you encounter a complaint of excessive surge at light throttle under load, there are a few different things to check for. If the car is equipped with a torque converter clutch, the clutch may be engaging too soon. To check this out, refer to the torque converter clutch diagnosis section of the appropriate service manual. Another good possibility is that there is air in the fuel system. To check for this, disconnect the fuel return line from the fuel hose near the front of the engine. Connect the piece of plastic hose, which is routed to a metal container, to the fuel return line. Crank the engine. If there is air in the system, you'll see the air bubbles in the plastic hose as the fuel flows through it. If there's no air in the fuel system, low fuel delivery pressure could be causing the problem. We'll check the fuel filter first. A caution here, whenever you loosen any fuel line, make sure any spraying fuel is directed away from any possible sources of ignition. Also, when checking fuel flow on the 4.3 liter, you don't have to crank the engine. Since the 4.3 liter has an electric fuel pump, just turn the ignition to run. Okay, let's loosen the line coming out of the fuel filter and going to the injection pump. Crank the engine and check whether fuel sprays out of the fitting at the filter. No fuel. Then tighten the outlet line and loosen the inlet line at the filter. This is the line coming from the fuel pump. Crank the engine. If the pressure coming out of the line is good, the filter should be replaced. If, however, the fuel delivery pressure is low coming out of this line, the cause is something else. The next thing to check is the fuel pump. Leave the line loosened at the filter. Remove the inlet hose to the fuel pump. Connect a hose to the pump from a separate container that contains fuel. Crank the engine. If the delivery pressure is still low, the fuel pump is at fault. If the pressure is now good, the problem is either with a restricted hose going to the pump or the fuel tank filter is restricted. Suppose the fuel delivery pressure is okay. The next thing to check is if the injection pump housing pressure is too high. Refer to the service manual for the procedure on checking injection pump housing pressure. If the injection pump housing pressure is okay, check the injection nozzles. It's important that the opening pressure be to specification. Test the nozzles, clean them, and retest them. Replace any that are not to specification. Also, make sure the nozzles are tightened in the cylinder head to the correct torque value. A last possibility is that the injection pump timing is retarded. Check the injection pump timing as specified in the service manual. A condition where the engine starts and idles rough with excessive noise and or white smoke but clears up after warm-up could be caused by something as simple as an incorrect starting procedure. Try starting the car cold using the recommended starting procedure for a diesel engine as published in the owner's manual. If this should turn out to be the cause, advise the operator on the correct procedure. If that's not the cause, the next step is to perform a housing pressure cold advance check to see if the cold advance is inoperative. This is the electrical connector for the housing pressure cold advance terminal. If the engine is cold, just unplug the connector. If the cold advance is operating, there should be a noticeable change in engine speed. It will become slower and rougher. If there is no change in the engine idle with the electrical lead disconnected, the cold advance is not operating. 
Another good possibility is that there is air in the fuel system. To check for this, disconnect the fuel return line from the fuel hose near the front of the engine. Connect the piece of plastic hose, which is routed to a metal container, to the fuel return line. Crank the engine. If there is air in the system, you'll see the air bubbles in the plastic hose as the fuel flows through it. If there's no air in the system, check next for an inoperative glow plug. You can do this quite easily on the 5.7 and 4.3 liter engines without removing the glow plugs from the engine. Check the glow plugs by connecting an ammeter in series with the two wires leading from the output side of the glow plug relay to the glow plugs. If you use an induction type meter, you can check both wires at the same time. Operate the system and note the reading. If the reading is less than specified, check the wires individually to determine which bank of glow plugs is responsible. A low reading for either bank means that one or more glow plugs in that bank is not operating. Check the individual glow plug leads by connecting the ammeter in series with the wire that feeds the glow plug. Operate the system and note the reading on the ammeter. Repeat the procedure for each glow plug. For those cylinders that have a reading of less than normal, check for continuity through the harness by disconnecting the lead from the glow plug and connecting a 12 volt test light from the connector to ground. Operate the glow plug system. If the test light goes on, the harness is okay. Replace the glow plug. If the light does not go on, check the harness. For the 1.8 liter engine, you can't test the glow plug while it's still in the engine. Remove the glow plug and check for continuity across the plug terminals and body. If there is no continuity, the heater wire is broken. Replace the glow plug. If a glow plug or the harness is not the cause, check the injection pump timing to see if it's correct. Perform the timing check as specified in the service manual. Check next for a malfunction in one or more injection nozzles. Chevrolet uses more than one kind of injection nozzle in its engines. Whichever engine you're servicing, be careful when removing or installing a nozzle. Use a special tool if it's called for, and if the nozzle has more than one hex on it, apply torque to the largest nozzle hex. You'll be testing the nozzle for such things as opening pressure and leakage. Detailed procedures for cleaning and testing injection nozzles are in the service manual. Replace any nozzle or nozzles that do not test out correctly. Another item to check out for this condition is a housing pressure check to see if the cold advance is inoperative. If you still haven't solved the problem, check the mileage on the engine. If the mileage is less than 2,000 miles, the only problem might be insufficient engine break-in time. Or the customer might be using too low acetane fuel. Suggest to the customer that he try a different brand of fuel. This will also allow him to accumulate more mileage on the car and the problem may disappear. However, advise the customer that if the problem persists after he tries some different fuels, to return the car for service. When an engine idles rough, it can be defined as an uneven shaking of the engine in comparison to other engines having the same number of cylinders and in the same body style. On a diesel engine, a rough idle condition can be caused by a difference in the output between cylinders. To smooth out the idle quality, the output has to be altered between the cylinders. When beginning to diagnose this condition, if the car is new, make sure the car has at least a quarter of a tank of fuel. Then run the engine at a high RPM to purge air from the system. Install a tachometer and check the idle speed, both slow and fast. If the idle speed is off, set it to specification. Another good possibility is that there is air in the fuel system. Disconnect the fuel return line from the fuel hose near the front of the engine. Connect the piece of plastic hose, which is routed to a metal container, to the fuel return line. Crank the engine. If there is air in the system, you'll see the air bubbles in the plastic hose as the fuel flows through it. No air in the fuel system? Then with the engine running, check for fuel leaks in the system. 
Run your finger around the connections at the fuel filter for traces of fuel. Check the injection nozzles for leaks at the nozzle body or at the fuel line connection. Also check at the injection pump to high pressure lines. If you don't find any fuel leaks, loosen the connection at one of the injection nozzles just enough so the engine doesn't stall. Look for liquid fuel or bubbles between the nut and the injector. If liquid fuel appears, go on to the next nozzle. However, if you see bubbles, turn off the engine and disconnect the line from the nozzle. Move the line so you can observe the inlet to the nozzle. Disconnect the wire going to the injection pump fuel solenoid, in this case the pink one, and crank the engine. Watch the nozzle inlet for bubbles. If there are bubbles, clean the nozzle. Squirt some oil or fuel in the nozzle inlet and recheck it for bubbles. If there are still bubbles, remove the nozzle and test it on a tester, as specified in the service manual. If the nozzle is inoperative, replace it. If the nozzle checks out, reconnect the fuel line and electrical wire and go on to the next nozzle. If you saw bubbles between the nozzle and the nut, but none at the nozzle inlet, it may be another nozzle that's causing the problem. The other nozzle could be blowing back to the injection pump and the blowback is then distributed to a good nozzle. By the way, on the 1.8 liter engine, you can locate a misfiring cylinder by cracking the inlet line to the injection nozzle. If the engine runs rougher, that's not the misfiring cylinder. However, if there isn't any difference in the engine idle, you've found the misfiring cylinder. Use this approach only on the 1.8. Another cause of the problem could also be a sticking advance piston in the injection pump. You can check this out quickly by pushing in on this lever at the bottom of the pump. This should retard the timing. If the engine idle slows down even more, the piston is functioning properly. However, if there is no change in the idle, the piston is frozen. If you still haven't solved the problem, check the injection pump timing as specified in the service manual. And if the timing is okay, perform a glow plug resistance check. Make sure you check the specifications in the service manual because they are different for 1984 models than for pre-1984. However, you can perform the glow plug resistance check only on the 5.7 and 4.3 liter engines. You cannot perform it on the 1.8 liter engine. There is one more check though that you can make on the 1.8 liter that is not made on either the 5.7 or 4.3. And that is the valve clearance. Because the 1.8 liter uses adjustable tappets, the valve adjustments are critical. Refer to the appropriate service manual for the valve adjustment procedure and correct clearance specifications. By the way, if rather than a rough idle, you encounter a condition where there is just an occasional miss, use the luminosity probe from a timing meter to locate the miss. Follow the timing meter manufacturer's instructions. After locating the miss, alter the fuel flow to correct it. You can do this by changing the fuel nozzle. Refer to the appropriate service manual for detailed information on the injection nozzles. If you're servicing an engine that misfires above idle, but idles correctly, the first thing to check is for a plugged fuel filter. A caution here, whenever you loosen any fuel line, make sure any spraying fuel is directed away from any possible sources of ignition. Also, when checking fuel flow on the 4.3 liter, you don't have to crank the engine. Since the 4.3 has an electric fuel pump, just turn the ignition to run. Okay, let's loosen the line coming out of the fuel filter and going to the injection pump. Crank the engine and check whether fuel sprays out of the fitting at the filter. No fuel. Then tighten the outlet line and loosen the inlet line at the filter. This is the line coming from the fuel pump. Crank the engine. If fuel does spray from the line, the filter is plugged and should be replaced. If the fuel filter checks out okay, another cause can be low fuel delivery pressure to the filter. So, the next thing to check is the fuel pump. 
Remove the inlet hose to the fuel pump. Connect a hose to the pump from a separate container that contains fuel. Loosen the line coming from the pump that goes to the fuel filter and crank the engine. If the delivery pressure is still low, the fuel pump is at fault. If the pressure is now good, the problem is either with a restricted hose going to the pump or the fuel tank filter is restricted. If the fuel delivery pressure also checks out, check the injection pump timing as specified in the service manual. Once you verify that the injection pump timing is correct, the only thing left to check is if the fuel is gasoline instead of diesel fuel or if it's contaminated. Remove a glow plug and crank the engine for five seconds. There should be fuel vapors coming from the glow plug hole. Sniff the vapors. See if you can smell gasoline. If not, collect some of the fuel and inspect it for the presence of water. Also, when you disconnected the inlet line to the fuel pump and connected a hose from a container filled with no and good diesel fuel a few minutes ago, if the engine started and ran correctly, you would know at that point that the fuel is contaminated. Flush the fuel system and refill the tank. For a driver complaint of a noticeable loss of power, there are a number of things that can be at fault. If the loss of power is accompanied by black smoke, it can be something as simple as a restricted air intake. Check the air cleaner element and replace if required. Other causes of loss of power with black smoke include a malfunctioning EGR. Also, those models equipped with EPR will produce this condition if the EPR malfunctions. Check the EGR and or EPR as specified in the emission section of your service manual. Also check the exhaust system carefully. A restricted or damaged exhaust system will cause a loss of power and black smoke. Replace any exhaust system components as necessary. One more possible cause of a loss of power accompanied by black smoke is a sticking advanced piston in the injection pump. To check this, push in on the lever at the bottom of the pump. This should retard the timing. If the engine idle slows down and the engine runs rougher, the piston is functioning properly. However, if there is no change in the engine, the piston is frozen. If there is a loss of power with normal smoke, check the injection pump timing. Refer to the service manual for the correct procedure. If the injection pump timing is okay, check next for a plugged fuel filter. A caution here. Whenever you loosen any fuel line, make sure any spraying fuel is directed away from any possible sources of ignition. Also, when checking fuel flow on the 4.3 liter, you don't have to crank the engine. Since the 4.3 liter has an electric fuel pump, just turn the ignition to run. Okay, let's loosen the line coming out of the fuel filter and going to the injection pump. Crank the engine and check whether fuel sprays out of the fitting at the filter. No fuel. Then tighten the outlet line and loosen the inlet line at the filter. This is the line coming from the fuel pump. Crank the engine. If fuel does spray from the line, the filter is plugged and should be replaced. If the fuel filter checks out okay, another cause can be low fuel delivery pressure to the filter. So, the next thing to check is the fuel pump. Leave the line loosened at the filter. Remove the inlet hose to the fuel pump. Connect a hose to the pump from a separate container that contains fuel. Loosen the line coming from the pump that goes to the fuel filter and crank the engine. If the delivery pressure is still low, the fuel pump is at fault. If the pressure is now good, the problem is either with a restricted hose going to the pump or the fuel tank filter is restricted. If the fuel pump is okay and you don't find any restriction in the fuel delivery system, check next for a restricted fuel return system. You can quickly check the fuel return line. Disconnect the fuel return line from the fuel hose near the front of the engine. Connect the piece of plastic hose, which is routed to a metal container, 
to the fuel return line. Crank the engine. If it starts and runs, there is a restriction in the fuel return lines. The fuel line restriction as a cause of the problem applies only to the 5.7 and 4.3 liter engines. Because of the different type of pump used on the 1.8 liter engine, it will not be affected by a return line restriction. When you check for a return line restriction on either the 5.7 or the 4.3 liter, if there is no restriction, remove the ball check connector from the top of the injection pump and see if it is plugged. Push on the ball to see if it moves freely. If it's plugged, the cause could be that the governor weight retainer ring in the injection pump has failed. If this is the case, then just cleaning the ball check connector won't solve the problem. The governor weight retainer ring must also be replaced. Something else to check for is a plugged fuel tank vacuum vent in the fuel cap. To do this, remove the fuel cap and listen for a loud hissing noise. A slight hissing sound is normal. A loud hissing means that the vacuum vent in the fuel cap is plugged. However, before replacing the cap, run the engine with the cap loose. If there is a difference in the power output, replace the cap. If you still haven't found the cause of the power loss, the fuel might be gasoline instead of diesel fuel, or it might be contaminated. Remove a glow plug and crank the engine for five seconds. There should be fuel vapors coming from the glow plug hole. Sniff the vapors. See if you can smell gasoline. If not, collect some of the fuel and inspect it for the presence of water. Also, when you disconnected the inlet line to the fuel pump and connected a hose from a container filled with no and good diesel fuel a few minutes ago, if the engine started and ran correctly, you would know at that point that the fuel is contaminated. Flush the fuel system and refill the tank. Another check you can make is for external compression leaks. Check for compression leaks at all nozzles and glow plugs using leak tech or an equivalent. If you find a leak, tighten the nozzle or glow plug to the recommended torque. Do not over tighten. Also, check for one or more plugged injection nozzles. Remove the nozzles one at a time and check them as specified in the service manual. Clean or replace the nozzles as necessary. The last check you can make is for low compression. Excessive exhaust smoke basically comes in three colors, black, white, and blue. In this section, we're going to discuss these three types of smoke and what causes them. Black smoke seems to be the most common excessive exhaust smoke complaint. In a diesel engine, at a certain speed, a predetermined amount of air enters the cylinder. This amount of air is sufficient to produce complete combustion of a given quantity of fuel. If more fuel is injected, overloading the engine beyond the specified limit, there won't be sufficient air for complete combustion, resulting in black smoke. Under these conditions, the black smoke contains a large quantity of unburned carbon. Because a properly operating injection pump is incapable of delivering rich or lean mixtures, any variable that increases fuel or reduces the amount of air taken into the cylinder will increase the tendency to produce black exhaust smoke. Let's look at some sources of black smoke that are directly related to improper burning of fuel. Check the air filter in the air cleaner assembly to make sure it's not restricted. A fuel return restriction will also cause improper burning of fuel. Both the fuel restriction and air entering the injection pump will change the automatic advance. Disconnect the fuel return line from the fuel hose near the front of the engine. Connect the piece of plastic hose, which is routed to a metal container, to the fuel return line. Crank the engine. If after a few minutes the engine runs without emitting the black smoke, there is a restriction in the fuel return lines. Locate the restriction and correct it. Another cause can be if the injection pump timing is advanced. This is usually accompanied by excessive combustion noise. 
check the injection pump timing as specified in the service manual and correct as necessary. Using fuel having the wrong cetane number will also produce black smoke. Changing brands of fuel may eliminate the problem. Another thing to look for is excess fuel delivery from the injection nozzles. This can be due to low opening pressure or a stuck nozzle. Remove the nozzles and test them. One more thing to check is the fuel pump pressure. If it's below spe 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 if it's below spe specification, it's below specification, if it's below specification, it will also cause specification. It will also cause improper fuel burning. Burn, 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 fuel burning. Also cause improper fuel burning. If it's below specification, it will also 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 if it's below specification, if it's below specification, it will all 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 will or an equivalent. 